Ann Matthews is a trailblazer, especially for women in Rotary. And here are some of the many firsts that she has achieved. She is the first woman to serve as Rotary International Vice President, first female Rotary International Board Member, first woman to serve as a uh, uh, on the Rotary, as a trustee on the Rotary Foundation Board. Of the 30 some committees that she has served on, she most cherishes her work chairing the US Polio Task Force to eradicate polio. Her passions include education, literacy, feeding the hungry, and providing clean water and sanitation. Ann Matthews is a recipient of the Rotary Citation for meritorious service. And at the International Convention in Atlanta in 2017, Anne was honored with the prestigious Rotary International Service Award for a polio free world. Help me welcome the lady that I like to call Rotarian extraordinaire, Dr. Anne Matthews. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you so much. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. I asked Sandy to just say, here's Ann, because most of the people know me in District 7770, and it's an honor to be here this morning. And it's so nice to hear and listen to Stephanie. Stephanie is a lady extraordinaire. She really is. She's sort of followed me as a trustee and a director. She's done a heck of a good job, and I am so proud of Stephanie. So, Stephanie, thank you. Thank you for your contributions, and I hope you have a very, very bright future in Rotary. It is an honor to be able to speak to my district this morning, and many of you have heard me say this, and probably Stephanie has heard me say this, this is the best district in the Rotary world. There's no question about it, 7770. Uh, we are just a fantastic district with great Rotarians whose goal is to make a difference. And I love uh, President-elect uh, um, Shaker's theme for this year, Serve to Change Lives. I think that's exactly what we're all about. So it's an honor to be with you this morning. I first want to congratulate those of you who are going to become the president come July 1. This is a high honor. And it is one that you will earn as you serve as the president of your club. I believe that being the president of a Rotary Club is the most rewarding position or role in Rotary. As Sandy said, I've served in numerous capacities and I've enjoyed each of them. But the Rotary Club, when you're the president, that's where all the action takes place. That's where you truly, truly can make a difference. That's where you meet your friends, you make lifelong friends, you cultivate relationships, you establish things through the Rotary Club that we can't do necessarily once we go on and work on the zone level or the international level but you do have the best position coming up July 1, I believe that you can have. What you need to do, and I'm going to challenge you this morning with a few things. I want you to start planning right now. That's the purpose of PETS, is to get you ready to start planning for your year. And I want you to be the very best president that your club has ever had. And I want you to have the best year that your club has ever had. You can do it. You can do it, ladies and gentlemen, if you start thinking, planning, listening to what transpired yesterday, what is taking place today. There's no doubt in my mind that you can do it. I want you to take your pen and I want you to write down this one little statement. When my year is over, comma, what do I want my legacy to be as the president of this club? What do I want my legacy to be? Because I hope you're thinking about that right now. I'm very serious. I want you to think, I want you to plan, I want you to prepare, and I want you to start your journey today. It is a journey. I want you to think in terms of that. That's why you're here at PETS. So this morning, I want to share with you what I call a few protocols. Let me explain that. 
Uh, there are a lot of definitions for a protocol. Some people think it's only uh, when you seat people at a certain table at a formal meeting or when you introduce people in that echelon of what we call the Rotary Royalty line. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about basics, guidelines, behaviors that you can use as the president of your club that will make a difference and that will ensure that you will be very successful. And very briefly this morning, I wanna to touch on six of those. Stephanie has alluded to some of those. I listened to her this morning and a couple of people yesterday did. Um, Governor Lack Paul did. I was very impressed with what he said yesterday also. But I wanna start with the first protocol or a basic as I call it, a guideline, and that is confidence, confidence. You have to have a healthy sense of who you are and what you can do. If you want to be the very best president of the Rotary Club, you have to have that self-confidence. It has to be built in and so forth. And you have to show it every time you walk in the room and everything that you do as the president. This is not an ego trip, ladies and gentlemen. It is confidence in your ability uh, to raise your club, the things that you do to great heights next year. Um, you have to exhibit that confidence in all that you do. From the time you walk in that room, remember this, when you walk in a room, you are a package. Are you organized when you walk to the front of that room? Do you start shuffling those papers? Do you lose half of them? Do you say something like, well, I think I had it here? Those kinds of things. You really need confidence in your ability to conduct those meetings and communicate in a way that your members will be so proud of you. The second protocol sort of deals with that. Model the behavior of an organized professional leader, a leader that your club members will want to emulate. You'll have people in that audience out there who will look at you every week if you're meeting in person or if you're on a Zoom. Some of them will want to be the next president or the president down the road. So you want to model behavior that each one of them will want to follow. In other words, you're setting an example. Remember this, whether you want to be it, or, be it or not, you are the role model for your club. You have heard great speakers here yesterday and today, and you've heard them talk a little bit about the goals and the objectives. So if you're going to be the role model and you're going to model the behavior that you need to do. Let me give you just one example of something I suggest you do at the beginning of your year. You heard Paula, I think, speak yesterday about the foundation. The foundation in my book is the heart and soul of Rotary. And that's what I care about deeply. The foundation, what we want you to do, everybody in your club is to give $100. That's not a lot of money. Give $100 to be a sustaining member. So what should you do if you're modeling the behavior that you want them to follow and to exhibit? The first week in July, consider giving $100 to the Rotary Foundation. You've set the example. You should always do things that you want them to do and you need to model that behavior. It's simple, it's easy, it's very easy to do. I think that's a critical protocol. And I think if you start thinking in terms of that, if I want them to do this, if I want them to participate in this community activity, whatever it is that you want to do, you model that behavior first. You are setting the example. And the next protocol, I love listening to this yesterday a little bit when Governor let uh, Paul alluded to it. He used different terms than I'll use. But I think this next protocol is something that's so critical. The very first week that you become the president, you should have ready a club survey that you're going to administer to the members in your club. What is the purpose of that survey? The purpose of that survey is to find out what the interest and the passions are of your club members. You want to know the kinds of programs, the kinds of community projects, 
the kinds of speakers, the kinds of global grants, their interest in Rotary, those kinds of things. What makes up Rotary overall? You want to find out what their needs are. I cannot overemphasize this. Um, I speak in a lot of Rotary clubs, in person a lot, <laughs> recently virtual, virtual, virtual. But amazes me um, sometimes about clubs meeting and not even having a speaker for that day. So you need to get this survey completed, get your committee chairs together and get really organized, find out what the needs are in that club, find out are they interested in the food bank and the blood mobile, the homeless, the free little library, whatever it is, Alzheimer's, like what was presented yesterday by Rod Funderburg. That's an excellent program. You know, what do they want to hear? And then you plan accordingly. But the first thing you do once you collect those data is you get with your committee chairs and you share that information. That is your plan. That is your plan for the year, but then you share that information with your club. You want them to know that that was not an exercise and you've put it in the trash can. That was an exercise to find out what they want to engage them in the activities for the year to address their passions and their needs. And remember this, the way that we retain Rotarians is one word, inclusion include them in, involve them in the activities of the club. We bring Rotarians into Rotary and guess what? We lose them within three months or six months. Why? Because we didn't find out what they were interested in. We didn't find out what their passions were. We didn't include them. I cannot overemphasize the need of that survey to find out, ask them things like, are we remeeting? Are we meeting the best day of the week? Is this the best time? Is the cost of our uh, meal too much? I listened in the chat box a while ago and I love listening to one lady talk. Some people are not even having food anymore at their in-person meetings, find that out. Find out what your people want. I promise you this, if you get that survey set up, and you collect those data and you analyze them with your club chairs and so forth, and then you implement them, you'll have a viable club. You'll have a club meeting that people want to come to and they'll enjoy. Remember, Rotary is supposed to be enjoyed, enjoyed, and something that people look forward to every year, every week, I'm sorry, every year too. The next protocol, the fourth, is be a change agent. Listen to the things Stephanie said a while ago. A lot of those things that she addressed means that we need to look at what we're doing. We may need to revamp. Uh, how is our club organized? There may be committees that have not functioned in years. There may be new committees, new activities that need to be addressed in our clubs. You take that survey that I just mentioned and you can revamp your club accordingly. You're coming in as the president. I guarantee you today that you know several things that you would like to improve on, you would like perhaps to drop, and things you want to implement in that club. Be the change agent so that you can get that club active, you can retain your members, and that you can have people who come to Rotary and say, I'm so glad I came today. Make Rotary, Rotary worthy of attendance. I'm gonna repeat that. Make Rotary worthy of attendance. Let's not waste time. Let's not waste people's time. Let's make it valuable. And the fifth protocol, which deals with everything I'm talking about and what you've heard since yesterday, the communication system. Be sure you have an excellent communication system. I enjoyed listening to Bill Oliver a while ago and getting familiar with the DAC based system and so forth. You'll be sending, or you should be sending, emails, texts, uh, Zooms, whatever the vehicle is that you will use to communicate with. Set up a good communication system. And presidents elect, don't just let them hear from you one time a week. 
at the Rotary meeting. You need to be communicating with them. You need to perhaps send note cards every now and then. Pick up the phone, call and talk with them. Know what is happening among the members in your club. If there's been a death, if there's been a wedding, whatever is happening and so forth, give congratulations. Pick up that phone, send the text. It's so easy now to communicate with your members. Make sure that every one of them are involved with you. You're involved with them. Another thing I want to mention, we have some large clubs. I was listening a while ago to the lady who's the president of Catherine, I think, of the Columbia Club, which is probably still our largest in District 7770. I can remember when that club had 360 members. As of right now, I think she said they have around 200. I know you may find it difficult, ladies and gentlemen, to know the name of everybody in your club if it's 200, 250. Try to do that. Or at least when you walk in, go early, walk among the tables, greet the tables and so forth. Communicate with them. Let them know that you're interested in them. Um, I, I can't overemphasize that. If you want to be su successful, if you want to be labeled the best club president, and if you want to have the best year, make sure you communicate with your people. Look them straight in the eye. We can't shake hands right now. We can't kiss on the cheek, those things we normally do. But you can certainly walk around among them and you can greet them. You also can pick up that phone. You can send emails. You can send texts. Be known as the great communicator. The great communicator. You know what? If you are, you will get so many accolades, you won't know what to do with them. Be genuine. Be caring. Be involved. Be engaged. And my sixth protocol is public image, which has to do with everything we do in Rotary. Uh, Stephanie mentioned several things to you today that you can consider and implement. Let me ask you today, is your club on the map in your community? Answer that honestly, is it? If it's not, it's your job to put it on the map. There's no question about that. Let's take my small club, Columbia East, less than 50 members, but we're known, get ready, we're known as the Vidalia Onion Club in Columbia. And I'm happy about that. You know why? This huge van comes in every May and we get bukus of onions to sell in Colombia, thousands of dollars. We all have a commitment to sell so many bags. And guess what? Every dime goes to charities in Colombia. We advertise that. Uh, our members have been doing this for years and years and years and years. And I love it. At first, I thought, how hey, am I going to load and carry those onions? Well, you know how I worked it out. There's some good, nice young men in my club, and they load those onions, and a lot of them even take them and deliver them for me. I collect that money, and I give it to the club. What am I saying? Public image means everything, ladies and gentlemen. We need to be known in our communities. Take advantage of your TV stations, your newspaper, your radio, the free, pet, free press publications that go out. Um, if Decide on what you want to do. I like something called the Blood Mobile to do it once a quarter. A Rotary Service Day, I love that. You decide. You can find that out from that survey too, what your members want to do. It may be to work with the homeless. It may be to work with an orphanage. My club used to years ago adopt a uh, cottage at the orphanage here in Columbia. I'm not sure why we dropped that. I think we still, I know we do, we still contribute financially to it. But what am I saying? I'm saying your club needs visibility, it needs publicity. It needs to be known for the service that you render in the community where your club is located. You need a signature project. You may have five, you may have 10, but you need one in particular that your club is known for. And if you don't have it, work on it. I, I know you can do it. So let me summarize quickly. I've mentioned the basics, what I call just the, the rudiments, the protocols that are necessary. 
for you to be the very best president of your Rotary Club and to have the best year that your Rotary Club has ever had. I'm going to mention them quickly. Have confidence in you. Exhibit that every time in everything you do, because if you don't, they will know it. Number two, model the behavior of a professional. Set the example for your club members. Number three, complete that survey. I'll help you with it if you need that help. Be the change agent that's needed in your club. And remember, you bring members in, but they leave if it's not a worthy one hour meeting. Set up an effective communication system where you have everybody engaged and valued. Every member needs to be valued, acknowledged, and thanked for his or her service. And then make sure you have a public image program that puts your program, puts your club on the map. That's so important. And in summary, I want you to ask yourself this, ladies and gentlemen, it's so important. Every month, I want you to ask this, would I want to be a member of my Rotary Club? Would I want to be a member of my Rotary Club? If you can't answer that in the positive, you need to get refocused. You need to make a lot of changes because when you walk out of that club, I'll go back to that statement I asked you to list at the beginning. What do you want your legacy to be? When you walk out of there, what difference have you made for the year? How will they remember you? Will they say, I'm glad his year is over? Or where did we get her from in the first place? Or will they say, that's the best president this club has ever had. Look at the things we did this year. Look how we made a difference in our community, in our city. I want them to be able to say, you're the best. You're the most effective. You've done the most to make a difference in your community. You can do it if you start planning thinking right now. And I'll end with a quote that I like very much because I think it's applicable to your serving as the president of your Rotary Club. Still, the most important job, the most rewarding job in Rotary. And this is a quote. The longest journey you will ever take is the 18 inches from your head to your heart. I encourage each of you to take that journey starting today. And when you do, you will serve to change lives. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed being with you. And Lou, I'm happy to answer any questions if there well, are any. Well, we have a number of uh, lovely comments about what uh, an inspiration you are. And that is true, of course. But we do have one question you might want to <laughs> address. Uh, how can we address the needs of the survey without the perception of coming into the role of president with radical changes? Okay. What I, what I would do is I would know who those club uh, committee chairs are, and I would meet them. We meet with them prior to the year to develop that uh, survey. I should have mentioned that. I'm sorry. I, I know I crammed a lot for the time that I have, but I would meet with them and I would get their ideas on what should be in that survey. Um, you don't want it to be anything that's um, totally out of line or something that your club cannot accomplish or whatever, but it also needs to be challenging and it needs to address the issues that we deal with or try to deal with in Rotary. Um, I would involve the club com committee chairs. You don't do that alone. Remember this, everything we do in Rotary, we do it in concert with others and even new ideas, things that we try to implement, you run them by several people because we're working together on this. We're making a difference together. That's what I would suggest to do. And I don't see any other questions. Uh, okay. Just again, many comments about how valuable 
the uh, presentation was. Thank you, Thank Ann. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I wish you a lot of luck. And if I can help you this year in any way, pick up that phone and call me. Good luck and all you do. Thank you so much, Ann. And now you